Well, hello everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in to Fun Ahead TV. Today is a very exciting day. It's kind of a nerve-wracking day, but an exciting one nonetheless. Today is the day that we begin putting the transmission for my 2001 Porsche Carrera 4 back together. Basically, as one of the major spring projects that we're doing to my 996 Porsche Carrera 4, we are, uh, of course, disassembling the transmission to replace the second gear synchro. It's a very common issue with these cars as they age and get higher mileage. The second gear will start to grind when trying to go into gear, especially under higher performance situations at first, and then eventually in just about every situation. And you can experience some second gear pop out, meaning once you're in gear, it actually physically pops out of gear. Fortunately, my transmission only experienced second gear pop out right after I would have gone into gear, meaning that it never actually fully slotted into gear, but that's also very indicative of the synchro having failed and then the teeth on the gears having gotten worn down so it didn't slot straight into gear. Anyway, that's actually one thing we're going to do today is take a closer look at the gears. We will compare the old second gear to the brand new second gear and then the old synchro uh, sleeve with the new one so we can get a side-by-side -side comparison of what exactly this wear looks like. So actually that's a decent segue. We'll start with that. We're going to go unbox the new parts. We'll look at those together and then we're going to begin reassembly. Within these two boxes we have everything that we need to complete this job now first and foremost let's look into box number one here as you can see is a wrapped up package what could be inside ah yes a brand new second gear look at this beauty so we are going to do a side-by-side -side comparison shortly here but the main thing here uh, we've kind of discussed this in a previous video is that these teeth are what we need to be refreshed and brand new. The teeth that the synchro itself physically locks into to get yourself into gear. And on the other gear, as we'll see in a second, uh, they have been pretty worn down. So when these teeth get worn down, combined with the, the sleeve on this synchro hub, uh, that's, the, that's when you start to get the, uh, the second gear pop out and also the grinding going into gear. And it is these teeth that are wearing down when you're hearing grinding going into gear. Okay, the other very big ticket item that we have ordered and received is an entirely new first and second gear synchro hub. So this is the uh, very scary, if you will, hub that contains these detents. Now in the event that this sleeve were to shift down too far, uh, while it's you know not in its installed position, these springs and pucks and ball bearings would shoot out and they are extremely hard to reinstall. So this is the one thing I'm most nervous about with uh, reassembly is um, reassembling this without shooting these all across the shop because in the event that they were to shoot across the, sh the shop, not only would we likely lose them because they would go everywhere, but they are very, very, very hard to reinstall. We're gonna go through the process of heating this up and it's an interference fit part, so we have to hit on it to get it to, to press into place. Um, so through all of that, these must stay installed. These, um, additionally, these teeth down here are the teeth that wear against the teeth in the second gear. And you can see here, and again, we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison with the old hardware, but you can see here, these teeth are extremely sharp and brand new and perfect. Much less exciting, we have our brand new gear oil to refill the transmission with, along with some brand new uh, drain and fill plugs for the transmission and their respective washers. And then here is the second gear synchro hardware. A synchro shift ring, this is the actual synchro ring. There's the shift, synchro shift ring and then the synchro ring. Whatever, they're all part of the, the synchronizer. And then lastly, this should be the actual, uh, what do they call this? The synchro cone ring. So this ring is what goes in between these two here. Uh, it's kind of like the, the friction material that allows um, this side, the, the hub side, and the gear side to mate um, and get one to one. It's kind of all three of these that wear together but I, I believe this is the more sacrificial. But this material, you know, think of it like basically like the brake rotors on your car. Um, this will wear down and then cause these two to get, um, you know, too close to each other, which causes the gear teeth and the, the sleeve teeth to get too close together before the gear has had a chance to 
go one-to-one -one speed with the shaft and then that's when you get the grinding. People always talk about how the transmission hardware for 996 transmissions is very expensive and they are not wrong. Uh, basically, we want to do a price breakdown. Um, this gear here I got on sale for $755 or $760. Um, that's this entire gear, $760. Uh, these three together, I want to say, I forget off the top of my head, I think these three pieces of hardware are about $400 combined. And then this right here is the big ticket item. This is just over $1,000. I think it's about $1,000, $1,050 for this assembly. Um, and unfortunately, you cannot just buy any one of these pieces individually. Um, I would have loved to have gotten just the, the, the sleeve, the outer sleeve here, which you can buy for the other gears. Um, but unfortunately for the first, second gear um, assembly, you, can, you can't buy just the sleeve and reuse your original hub. They make you buy the entire assembly, and unfortunately the assembly is $1,000. And of course I think they do that because the second gear synchro failure is such a common item with these transmissions once they get higher mileage. Um, and of course they're not just gonna sell you the outer ring itself, they would love to capitalize on that and sell you the entire hardware. But it's it's not all bad um, because, you know, at least, you know, I, I'm someone who loves to refresh hardware. Yes, it sucks to spend more money, but at least we know that the hardware going into this transmission is going to be factory perfect again. Okay, now for a comparison. So this is the basically the first, second gear stack. So these top synchros here are the synchros for first gear. And we'll go ahead and get those up and out of the way real quick. So these are the synchros for first gear. They're the same ones, same part numbers and everything as the ones for second gear. So you have your, your inner ring, your center, uh, the, you know, your, call it your brake rotor, and then your, your outer synchro ring as well. So those are the first gear. Then we have this synchro hub. I'm going to separate the second gear synchro real quick. Now this is the second gear itself. Now let's look, let's do a quick comparison of the gear. So brand new hardware on my left hand and then old hardware in the right hand. You can see just how worn down these teeth are. You can see how they're, they're shiny um, and rounded off. Those should not be worn down like that. Okay, now we'll look at the brand new gear and you can see they are perfectly machined teeth, very sharp on the top. That's exactly the way we want this to be. Looking at this again, you can see those the, the areas that are supposed to be perfectly machined are rounded off. Uh, there's even like little bits and chunks taken out ar around the, uh, the very edge. So not good. It's that way all around it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's funny because when you kind of look at it at a distance, you know, you, you wouldn't think anything of it. But then when you look at it up close, you realize, oh my gosh, actually, okay, that's a lot of wear. And, uh, yeah just that amount of wear causes some uh, some pretty big issues with your transmission. Now we can look at the, the synchros, the old versus new second gear synchro hardware, but honestly we're not really going to see much. Um, this, this hardware itself is kind of hard to tell, but I mean obviously this is pretty worn down hardware given the fact that we were getting the uh, sleeve and the gear collision causing the gear grinding, which is indicative of these three components wearing down. And again, on the note of brand new hardware, I'm sure that I could have just replaced like the center cone to, because given that it is more so the wear item than these other two. Um, but again, I just kind of wanted to go ahead and um, get it all refreshed, figure while we're in there, we might as well just spend the extra couple hundred dollars to go ahead and get all of it brand new. It's hard to tell on camera probably, but up towards the upper edge, especially you can see that it's kind of worn a little bit smoother on this, and you can see how it's kind of like deeper, uh, some more material on the outer edge, uh, whereas on the inner, on the upper edge, it's maybe a little bit more worn down, but very hard to tell again. I mean, we're talking probably like microns, and then that causes this cone to go that much further and then cause the collision. So then lastly, what we'll look at is the uh, synchro ring itself. And again, I kind of mentioned this in the previous video, but you can see a lot of these teeth are, are kind of worn down um, and they should not be that way. When we compare these teeth to the brand new one, you can see just how dull these are, how much of these have been worn down versus 
these brand new like look how perfectly sharp those are you could like mow your lawn with this thing that's crazy yeah look we'll catch those sharpness that sharpness in the light look at that versus here you can just see how dull these are I think it's officially time that we move to the other side of the shop and we begin installing this stuff. Alrighty, well, I've set up kind of shop out in the middle of my, my shop space here so that I can have plenty of room to work. And I know this looks kind of goofy. We've got a toaster oven sitting on an old piece of cabinet. Now the reason for that is, of course, we need to heat these interference fit gears up um, a lot in order to get them to go on smoothly. People in forums say you need to get it up to 350 degrees, so we've got the device to do that. And we'll kind of just do that one at a time. We'll get them up to temperature and then attempt to install them. These are going to be my uh, press tools. And I'm hoping that with enough temperature in the whatever it is that we're trying to install at the moment, um, we should be able to uh, press, the, press these gears on with relatively low effort. Um, we'll see. Of course, it took a ton of effort for them to come off. So maybe I'm ignorant to think that they're just going to press on super easy peasy. The way this is going to go is I will heat up whatever piece I'm trying to put on. We'll take it right out of the oven and then we'll have the transmission right here to be able to, uh, you know, press fit on a, either a, a hub for a synchro or a, an inner bearing race. Like for example, this, this is an inner bearing race that we have not taken off. This is the one that second gear sets on. And of course I've got plenty of uh, insulation here. That's gonna be an interesting part of all this is trying to work with pieces of metal that are 350 degrees, <laughs> trying not to burn myself uh, while also trying to uh, install the part. Okay, so first things first, we need to install second gear. Fortunately, the gears themselves, they are not press fit on. Those are gonna be easy peasy. Um, what we need to do is slip the needle bearing over for the gear and then we can slip the gear over and it will just set in place. From there, then we need to get that very stressful, scary second gear synchro hub that I had mentioned. That's what goes on this spot. So once we get second gear in place, we gotta heat up the hub and then get it on here and then try not to shoot it all over the shop. Then we can move on to the first gear area. Now, the race for first gear is not on yet because we had to take it off in the process of getting second gear off. So that's another thing we're gonna have to heat up in there, press over, and then we can do the same thing we did with, with second gear. We'll put the needle bearing back and then, the, and then that gear. And then we will need to put back on the uh, reverse gear and then uh, the, uh, which has its own race and then press on the synchro and the, uh, the roller bearing that goes on the very top of all of this. And then we'll fasten that with the circlip that goes right there. Doesn't look like much space, but obviously this is a lot of things that must happen and happen correctly in order to have a full and complete stack yet again to be ready to eventually put the nose cone back on. So. Down here, I've prepared uh, the bottom part of the transmission with just a bunch of rags. I don't want to drop anything down in here, so I've packed as many of these as possible. Just in the event that, you know, who knows what decides to fall down, it hopefully won't fall into uh, one of the cracks and crevices and be hard to find. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and set you guys on a time lapse. I'll get you guys as close to the action as possible so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. Um, but you know, it's just gonna be a lot of waiting. I think the name of the game here is just being as prepared as possible. Um, you know, you don't wanna just start going at it and then, you know, end up screwing something up. So I've spent the last three hours preparing for, for getting up to this point now. Um, and here we finally are. So I'm gonna put you guys in this time lapse now and we will just start going at it. As you can see, we have the synchro hub and sleeve um, all in place. And then, you know, just setting on top right now, we have the first gear synchros as well. I put those in place on top of the gear just to kind of help hold the detents in place. You know, I didn't know what the exact best strategy was going to be to do that. Um, but I just felt like not having something, at least on one side of the hub, 
uh, was risky, you know, just since those detents are just literally sitting there. Um, man, that was that was stressy. Sure, it offered a little bit of resistance, but you know, I was still able to pop it on with my uh, with my uh, PCV uh, or PVC PCV positive crankcase ventilation PVC press and uh, you know dead blow hammer here. So we're not out of the woods yet. I'm. I'm trying to figure out now if I have this thing far enough down. That's my one concern right now is that is that we don't have that down far enough right now. Um, and if we if we don't, then we're literally going to have stacked all of this stuff back up, and we're not going to be able to get the circ clip on, and we're not going to know that until we have literally everything back on. Would that be terrible, terrible bad news bears? Yes, it absolutely would. Honestly, it it felt like it went down, like it felt like it bottomed. So. Not 100% sure, it's just that little bit of like being unsure is, is making me not feel the greatest at the moment. As you can see here, I, uh, I fashioned a cool little uh, hanger to work as a just kind of a retainer clip to hold, to hold this thing in the center. I was worried that as I was setting this on that the ring might fall, uh, so this retainer is, is helping to hold it up. Um, so anyway, hopefully that time lapse was at least a little bit helpful. Um, you could see me stressing balls. Huh. Well, hopefully you guys saw that in what may have been the world's shortest time lapse of all time ever in the history of the world, that I was able to literally grab the inner first gear race out of the toaster oven and set it directly onto the output shaft. I literally did not have to uh, use any hammer persuasion whatsoever. It, it just, you know, 15 minutes at 350 in the oven and it just f sets right on. Per what I was saying before about whether or not these are set far enough down, I referenced some old video and photos of, um, you, know, you know, when I was taking all this apart to see exactly where this race was setting relative to these kind of wear marks, or these dirt, I guess they're kind of like, I don't know what they are, but these little marks on the shaft. And I was able to see that actually this is, a, the, the synchro ring is down far enough, and this subsequently is also down far enough. Hopefully it's not, you know, microns too high, but uh, the first gear stack is designed a little bit differently. Um, and I guess while we're killing time, I can go ahead and show you guys what that looks like. Alrighty, so, here is the first gear stack, and you, as you can see, um, we have one synchro to deal with uh, in this within this stack, one synchro ring. Um, this one, I think, can be done a lot less stressfully, and I'll explain that a little bit as we go. Um, but basically, from here, we have three primary things to press into place. One is the inner race for reverse gear. Um, one is this synchro hub right here, which as you can see, this, this um, you know hub itself is designed quite a bit differently. So instead of having you know, on the inside of this detent, having this actually pressed into place, this just floats when it's not connected, and then this is actually what is uh, pressed onto the hub. So, you know, once we get first down, which all we need to do is literally set this needle bearing in place um, over the race that we just pressed onto the shaft, then we can put first gear on. We need to press the inner race on for reverse gear. Once that inner race is pressed on, then we can literally just slip this gear and these, um, you know, the gold synchro as well. Um, and then we press this on and over it all. And then finally, finally, we need to heat up and press in this uh, roller bearing. Well, since, you know, this isn't all going to take very long, it's not even worth putting it on time lapse. Um, I will just show you in live time what it's like to, or what it takes to put first gear back on. So here's the first gear itself. As you can see, we've got the uh, synchro teeth underneath, of course, that's very key. Um, and these, I guess we never took a close look at these on camera, but here I'll see if I can show you. You can see how sharp those are. These are in very good shape, so that's good. We, we know we can feel good about putting this gear back into the transmission. You can see that there's, see these little tabs coming up here on this inner sync or the middle synchro ring. Those go into these little um, holes on the gear. So as we go down, with the gear, we just need to make sure that those line up and that they, you know, go in. There. Okay, now next up is the uh, thrust washer. 
I didn't know until just a little bit ago that this is actually a pressed on part. persuasion than I expected it would. This thrust washer isn't perfectly round and so what I don't know is if there's some direction or orientation that it needs to be on this shaft. I don't know. <laughs> That's a kind of a question mark at this time. I wonder if it just has these openings so that you know oil can get inside of the bearing. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So wherever the openings are you can see the that black thing right there. That's the needle bearing for first gear. But also it seems like it would be unbalanced. There's no markings like on the gear. Well, obviously it can't be on the gear. It turns separately of the gear. Um, there's no markings on the shaft or anything that would indicate the direction that this might go. So I just decided we have to arbitrarily put it back on. I don't know, I could be wrong. <laughs> Hopefully that uh, doesn't end up biting me in the butt when we get this all back together and up in the car and there's a brutal vibration. Next up, we need to prepare for getting the inner race of reverse gears bearing set in place here. Here we go with the inner race for reverse gear. Boom. Okay, well as you just saw that uh, set nicely in place very effortlessly. It's amazing how fast that happens because now I can't even move it but you saw how easily I was able to um, set this race onto the shaft. So clearly heating it this this way is the key. It, it just like sets right on but you gotta be speedy with it. Another round of assembly lube just for these splines here. All right, so now we just need to go set in place um, reverse. Okay, here's the inner race for our reverse gear. Now this one, of course, we need to be very careful with because there are detents within this. I'm getting nervous. Are we gonna have clearance when it comes to being able to put that circle up on? Oh wow, okay. Didn't even need persuasion on that either, so that's good to know. Lastly, what we need to do is put the roller bearing on the very last spot here. This is it, this is it for all of the marbles. Let's do it, let's find out. Okay. Well, it's set over it. What do you guys think? That's the washer. Moment of truth. It's officially time to find out if our handiwork has paid off. Well, I think it's on there. It's really, really hard to tell. I mean, when it when I took this thing off, it was it, it was like a zero zero tolerance um, circlip. It was. I mean, I, I was like, oh my gosh, this thing needs to go back together perfectly because I mean, it it took force to actually open the circlip up because of how tightly it was squeezed by by the gear stacks here. So it appears to be in there and I don't think it can go anywhere. What a day. That was successful. I feel so relieved to have gotten everything done that we just got done. I was dreading that process, specifically with the uh, second gear, or first second gear synchro hub, and possibly throwing those detents all over the freaking shop. I was so worried about that. I did actually have one very close call <laughs> where I was picking it up and uh, kind of moved it a little too much. Um, and I thought for a second I popped one of those out. Fortunately, I did not. Thank God. But anyway, as you can see, we have the transmission back in the workshop area on the workbench. Uh, we're going to go ahead and call it a day. It's been a very eventful day. So next up, we need to kind of just put the finishing touches on it. We need to put both uh, the reverse fork and the one-two fork back in it. And then, of course, put those detents back up 
into the transmission as well. From there, of course, we put the nose cone back on it, which I've heard is quite a pain because then you then need to align all of those um, rods, the, the shifter fork rods, and those don't like to go back into place perfectly. But anyway, I've looked up some tips and tricks on how to do that, and hopefully we can kind of deploy some of those tips and tricks and hopefully within a reasonable time frame be able to get everything all backed up in there and uh, then sealed up. That'll be in the next video. We'll get all that back together. And then we are so close to being able to put this transmission back up into the car and drive it soon. I hope, I don't know. It's exciting. And, and I, you know, it's been all winter. I haven't driven this car and it's going to be like drive like a whole new car once it, uh, once it's all done, hopefully in a good way. Hopefully I didn't do anything along the way to completely screw this thing up with that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please do the channel a huge favor and hit that like button. It really, really helps me out a lot. Even if you found this video remotely entertaining, please just hit that like button. Um, also subscribe if you want to see where we go from here because, you know, obviously we're in the home stretch, hopefully, knock on wood. Hopefully we'll be driving this car very soon and we can make a very exciting video about that. So thank you guys as always for tuning in to Funnelhead TV. I will see you guys next time. <laughs>